Welcome, everybody, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I just want to start off today by saying happy Eclipse Day. I'm so glad to see all of you here in the Ed Sullivan Theater because it means that my eclipse glasses worked. <laughs> and then my retinas are still intact. And I need those retinas for important stuff, like staring at my phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. Everybody see it? Ever get a chance to yeah. see it today? Yeah. Crazy. That's see it? It was an amazing thing to see. Here at The Late Show, we moved up rehearsal so we could all go outside and watch. And as, and as, as beautiful and otherworldly as eclipses are, there is a simple scientific explanation. For a brief moment, the dread god Telebrion devours Mother Moon <laughs> to punish gentle Tala off the man within. That's why we always ring the bell of noontime darkness <laughs> to frighten Telebrion back into the horn of dusk. <laughs> I learned all that from Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> A few lucky people got to experience today's eclipse from 30,000 feet because some airlines offered special flights to chase the eclipse path around the country. Okay, I mean, that sounds wow. cool, but the windows are over here. <laughs> Sun's up there. Even the plane does barrel rolls. What if you're in the, what if you're in the middle seat? <laughs> Could you just lean back a little? Open the shade. No, no, okay, fine. Well, then I get to watch Napoleon. <laughs> of course, an eclipse is always a good opportunity to ponder our place amongst the stars. But it's also a great time to see your pets go crazy. In fact, <laughs> scientists warn pet owners that their furry friends may exhibit strange behaviors. And I'm, I'm being told we have footage of one dog during the eclipse. Get out of my way! Oh. It happened. Yeah. That was happening. <laughs> that was happening all over. Yeah. The line of totality. That's on the totality only. It's not just pets. Experts also said that most animals would likely be confused by the darkness and start their nighttime routines. Oh. <laughs> animals have nighttime routines? Watches the giraffe exfoliates with a water-based cucumber cleanser, <laughs> while its predator, the lion, plugs in its CPAP machine. Oh, no, it forgot the distilled water. <laughs> the eclipse started its trip across America down in Texas, and CNN announced the event with this Chiron. Animals at Dallas Zoo react to total solar eclipse. Thank you, CNN. That is news you can use. <laughs> I, I wish they'd give more animal takes on current events. I want to see breaking ring-tailed lemur reacts to RFK Jr.'s <laughs> VP pick. Okay, CNN. How did the animals react? We started hearing like a lot of more bird chatter out in the distance out there. There's some guinea fowl that started running around and making, you know, kind of crazy sounds. And then we actually saw uh, one of the younger giraffes start galloping around. A zebra started chasing him. That's right. <laughs> the eclipse caused zoo animals to do the unthinkable. Anything. <laughs> Usually they're, uh... they're too depressed and just standing in one part of the enclosure where no one can see them. But, uh, okay, CNN guy, didn't you forget to tell us the best part? I forgot to tell you guys the best part. <laughs> Literally seconds ago, uh, right before we came on the air, if you look in between those two tree trunks, there was an ostrich that laid an egg. And the uh, ostrich was kind of standing over the egg for, for a moment. I can't tell you if she laid the egg at this particular time because of the eclipse or what the deal might be, but uh, even the zoo folks here were kind of curious about the timing of it all. No offense, but laying an egg is one of the things ostriches do. <laughs> Not sure if that's news. Call me when an ostrich poaches an egg. <laughs> but that is by no means the dumbest coverage of this eclipse because Fox News decided to cover the story like this. A Fox News alert, a rare celestial event collides with a policy failure on the ground. The southern border will be directly in the path of totality today when the moon covers the sun. While everybody's going to be looking up, if you're looking down here at the border, here's some of what you're going to see. You'll see uh, illegal immigrants dressed in dark clothing, sometimes camouflage, actively trying to sneak into the United States. Yes. Oh, yes. Immigrants in dark clothing are using the eclipse to sneak across the border. They won't get another opportunity like that. <laughs> until night. <laughs> of course. Uh. 
Of course, Donald Trump had to make the eclipse all about himself. He posted this bizarre ad that was made by one of his fans. That is a hell of a campaign message. <laughs> I will bring darkness upon the earth. <laughs> blocking out all the life-giving warmth, driving the animals to stark madness. Give me that ostrich egg. Daddy wants a giant McMuffin. Give it up. Yeah. Here I am. Ooh, one thing they left out of Trump's Eclipse commercial was the time he stared directly at the Eclipse, <laughs> which is why this year, President Biden released his own Eclipse video. Folks, enjoy the Eclipse, but play it safe. Don't be silly. Yeah, folks. <laughs> I, I tell you, no, folks, you gotta protect your eyes, folks, no joke. That's why I'm doing this with double shades right there. <laughs> Whoa, how'd it get so dark? Don't worry, everything's fine. I'm just a tall, unsteady old man alone by a low balcony railing who can't see a damn thing. <laughs> Marco! Marco! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Was Joe Biden just here? <laughs> It's been an interesting week here in New York City because in addition to the eclipse, on Friday, the East Coast was hit by a rare 4.8 magnitude earthquake. I think we'll all remember where we were when we said, what's that sound? Is my neighbor making a smoothie? <laughs> and at the time, and this is true, I was at Newark Airport. I was flying down to South Carolina for the weekend and I was in line at the, at the Dunkin' Donuts buying my Affleck juice when suddenly the ceiling of Terminal A started shaking and the lights were swaying and I thought, why would they put a truck ramp on top of an airport terminal? <laughs> that doesn't seem sustainable. Then everybody's looking at their phone saying, hey, there was an earthquake. And after all that, my coffee still wasn't ready. <laughs> okay, America may run on Duncan. I'm just saying Duncan needs to pick up the pace. <laughs> Even though it was barely a tremor, we did get some fun footage from the Statue of Liberty. Look at that, reminds me of that famous poem. Give me your tired, your poor, your whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Lady Liberty wasn't the only landmark getting in on the action. The Empire State Building tweeted, I am fine. <laughs> it's nice to know. It's comforting. That's nice. You don't want anything to happen. She did. She did. While the Port Authority bus terminal tweeted, kill me. <laughs> Wow. Poor Port Authority, wow. what did it ever do to me? Uh. While no one was hurt, uh, there were some dicey moments, specifically for a Pennsylvania man who got a vasectomy <laughs> during the earthquake. Ooh, that is scary, especially since he went in for a root canal. <laughs> <laughs> the man is totally fine, but according to the patient, when the doctor said he was pausing the operation, I figured he was messing with me. Yeah. <laughs> Because if there's one thing urologists are famous for, it's doing tricks. All right, I'm gonna make a small incision and whoa, hey, who put all these handkerchiefs in your taints? <laughs> <laughs> an earthquake directly followed by an eclipse feels a little apocalyptic. Well, there is one Armageddon foretelling phenomenon that's actually kind of fun because the Italian volcano Mount Etna is blowing smoke rings into the sky. That is so cool. That's great. I mean, how does that even happen? Jim, can we take a closer look inside that volcano? Okay, there we go. Okay, we're, we're descending down the caldera. And I knew it, it's your college roommate, Dan. Come on, Dan. <laughs> These smoke rings seem innocent enough, but back in the 17th century, Etna buried the town of Nicolosi. So Italians, please stay safe, or at least make sure you're in a cool pose for future archeologists to uncover. <laughs> Everyone should have one ready. I'm either going with double guns or copper tone baby. <laughs> Speaking of. Wow. Ooh, 
Uh, speaking of the end times, uh, Donald Trump, this weekend, <laughs> Trump held a fundraiser down in Palm Beach where his campaign claims he raised an eye-popping $50 million. Wow, that is impressive, or not, because so far the amount has not been verified. <laughs> that has big, my girlfriend at summer camp was so hot energy. <laughs> yeah, uh, me and Brenda, we kissed the French way, so it's so sexy, you can't verify it. And, <laughs> and, and, and then she gave me $50 million. <laughs> At that price, Trump had to play all the hits. So naturally, it got real racist about immigrants saying, why can't we allow people to come in from nice countries? Nice countries, you know, like Denmark. <laughs> Maybe because people don't tend to flee one of the happiest countries on earth. <laughs> Astrid, we have to get out of Copenhagen. The furniture design is too functional. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. But when we come back, meanwhile, Jordan's